Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about ecology. The topic for the day is going to be ecosystem services. So as always is the case, let me get you your objectives, and then we'll get going. First up, differentiate between instrumental value and intrinsic value. And the second part, discuss each major category of ecosystem services. Today shouldn't take too long, so let's go ahead and jump on in. First thing I want to talk about is just this idea of value and essentially value is basically deciding how important something is or is not. When we talk about environmental science there's basically two different kinds of value that is assigned to things that we get from the environment. There's instrumental value and there's intrinsic value. If something has instrumental value that means that it has value as a tool or something that humans can use directly. Um, now knowing this category of instrumental value, instrumental value could include the fact that a beach is beautiful and people are willing to go hang out on that beach. So it's still something that humans are using directly and gaining some sort of profit or benefit from. If a, I don't know, ecosystem is said to have intrinsic value, that means that it should be protected just for the sake of being protected. This would be the person who argues that we have a moral obligation to protect nature whether we actually get anything from it or not. So instrumental value says that things have value as tools or instruments that we can use. Intrinsic value says that we should protect resources just because it is the morally correct thing to do. For the rest of the video today, we're going to talk about ecosystem services. And ecosystem services are things that the environment provides for us that we might be able to do for ourselves, but if we were to do it, it would be extremely expensive. So these are things that we get directly from the environment. There are five different types of ecosystem services, so we'll talk through those, and that's pretty much going to be our day. The first type of environmental or ecosystem service that I want you to know about is the category of provisions. Provisions are resources used directly by humans. So some examples of provisions would be lumber that we get from the forest, it would be food that we grow from a field, it would be medicines that we take from the rainforest. Um, those would all be examples of provisions. Remember a provision is something concrete that we get from nature and it's an ecosystem service because nature is providing those things for us. The next category of ecosystem service that you should be aware of is regulating services. And regulating services are services that help maintain global balances. An example of this would be the plankton you see there. They are floating throughout the oceans and they take in carbon dioxide. Obviously forests and other plants also take in carbon dioxide too, so that would be a regulating service in that they are helping to regulate the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere and probably indirectly also regulating climate change and our impact on the atmosphere. So any service that helps to balance out the planet is known as a regulating service and that is also an ecosystem service. Number three up on the list is general support systems and these are systems of support I just restated what I said. These are systems of support that the environment provides for us. Some examples of support services would be pollination. Um, if there were not birds and bees and bats to pollinate our plants, the global crop production and food production would be very, well, significantly lower. Um, we wouldn't have nearly as much food around if we did not have those insects and animals pollinating our plants for us, so they are supporting our agriculture. There's pest control because obviously within nature you have got some bugs that eat other bugs and especially if you are an organic farmer, um, having pests available to eat other pests is a big deal because you're not using pesticides to control bug populations, so that would be another support system. And then finally we got water and air filtration. Now I got a marsh there. Marshes are very good at filtering water and then obviously we know that trees and plants filter air, so those would all be things that ecosystems do that support our life in some way. We've got resilience, which we've talked about resilient ecosystems as being ecosystems that can uh, bounce back very quickly after a disturbance. In this context, we're going to talk about resilience because if an ecosystem is able to keep going, then we are able to continue drawing resources and benefits from that ecosystem. So obviously healthier ecosystems have higher, I guess, instrumental value because they can provide us with more goods. And as long as we protect the resilience of those ecosystems, they will continue to benefit us. 
And finally, this is the last one, is cultural services. And it's kind of hard to make the argument that a beautiful view is something that humans can use directly or benefit from directly, as is the case with an instrumental value. But a lot of people would argue that in nature, we get a couple things. One, you've got aesthetic beauty. It's been shown that humans are much healthier if they have access to the environment and to seeing nature. So you could consider beauty a benefit to humans. Um, obviously, we get art and painting coming out of nature. There's also the opportunity for uh, scientists to do research. So these cultural services don't necessarily provide humans with uh, monetary value, though they may. But generally, it's just the idea that humans need nature, and nature provides us with opportunity. So cultural services would be the last instrumental value. And then our last slide for the day is going to talk about intrinsic value, which I kind of mentioned already. But intrinsic value is basically the idea that ecosystems are valuable regardless of the resources they provide. So even if ecosystems did not provide us with one thing, they're still supposed to be protected because it's the morally right or ethical thing to do. And a lot of people would argue that regardless of what we get from nature, we should protect the environment anyway. So that's it. Instrumental and intrinsic value, ecosystem services. Make sure that you know each of those five categories of ecosystem services. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.